Whether it's in the air, on land, the sea, or under it, the SimNet is your simulation network. Hello and welcome back to the SimNet. In my first video on this channel, I shared the assembly process for my B8 grip, and today we're going to go over the wiring and calibration. If you're not familiar with the B8 grip, a quick background. This joystick grip was used in almost every jet and helicopter designed in the USA for decades, and it's still in use today. When Heepler Simulations announced their upcoming F4 Phantom module for DCS, I knew it would be the most authentic and immersive experience from them yet, and I wanted my controls to reflect that. I figured others would as well, and that's why this design is available completely for free on Cults and Thingiverse. The brains of the operation are in the custom PCB design by Debelestis over on the ED forums. This allows you to use CD4021 shift registers to communicate with Thrustmaster and Verbal bases using a 5-pin mini-DIN connector. The best part is that it's entirely plug-and-play. You wire things up, plug it in, and configure it like you would any other joystick. I love no-code solutions like this. Here we've got the Debolistus PCB, a few buttons, a navigation switch that we're going to use for the build, as well as the shift register. Bent pins there, and the resistor networks, as well as another 10K resistor and a ceramic capacitor. All of these parts are listed in the bill of materials on the Thingiverse and Cults pages, respectively. And then this here is the uh, breakdown of the five pin mini DIN connector. You can solder the wires directly uh, to that connector. And the nice thing about uh, DuPont cables is that they come in the color orientation that Thrustmaster themselves use. And so it's actually quite easy to uh, have a bit of a ribbon connector there. So the shift registers have a use slot at the top. If you line that up with the use slot marking on the PCB itself, you can just uh, fit those right in. Uh, sometimes in transit, the pins might be bent. And so I'm just bending them back into place to ensure that I can fit the shift register in. And once it's in there, it's quite easy to uh, solder on the other side. Resistor networks have a dot, which indicates the top, and that goes in the top slot. The ceramic capacitor and the resistor, I usually do with the logo facing me and the gold stripe up, respectively. And then the DuPont connectors here, again, they've got the correct color coding, and we'll go over that in a minute here. Uh, but once you've assembled it like this, you can solder everything up on the flip side and it'll look like that. Alrighty, so here we have the Debolistus PCB. We've got the 5-pin mini DIN pinout guide and the 5-way navigation switch wiring, the tact switch wiring for the trigger, and then the pinky switch wiring here as well. Uh, so a few things to note when installing the shift registers, there is this U slot here for the 4021 shift registers that ensures the correct orientation. Uh, resistor networks also have a dot, which indicate the top of the resistor network. Uh, so that dot, you want to uh, uh, make sure it lines up with this top slot here when installing uh, both of those. So that's the correct orientation for that. And then from there, we've got two common ground ports. Uh, so for your five pin, uh, your six pin five way navigation switch that requires ground. One of your tack switch uh, pins has to be ground. And then the common switch on the pinky button needs to go to ground as well. So that way you ensure continuity of the signal. Okay. So the great thing about the Debolistus PCB is that they have clearly marked what all of the pins are and you can color match that to the pinout for the mini DIN connector. So very straightforward, you just connect brown to brown, red to red, orange to orange, yellow to yellow, green to green. And uh, that ensures that when you plug it into your uh, Thrustmaster or Verbal base, that you are going to have the correct uh, data being sent to the base. Um, that's why this is a no code solution. Uh, because all this is doing is uh, ensuring that you have the right inputs and the right timing. Uh, so there's no code. You don't need to flash anything to this board. Um, it's a, it is a codeless solution. So just something to note for the five-way navigation switches. 
there are four pins which are a little closer together and then two pins which are a little farther apart. Uh, so when you're looking at the switch from a top down, the bottom right hand switch is the common. So that means that we are going to wire this one to the ground pin. Uh, and then the rest can go to the rest can go to signal pins. Um, usually these four here. Uh, and uh, these are the hat corresponding hat directions uh, on the actual Thrustmaster grip. And so when you open up the uh, software for Thrustmaster or Verpal, um, you'll see that they show up as a hat. Although technically you could connect any signal pin to any of these holes uh, and it will show up in uh, DCS at the end of the day, it just might have a slightly different name. So don't fret if you've hooked up your trigger uh, to uh, you know ground and hat one up, and then you click your trigger in DCS and it says, uh, oh, this is hat one up. Uh, don't worry about that. It's, it's not going to actually make the hat move. It's whatever you assign it to in the DCS software. Um, so the push button itself, uh, we remove two of the pins. Uh, so we are left with two pins. Again, those go to signal and ground respectively. And then for the push button, uh, we have three pins on it. We want COM, so that connects to the ground, and then normally open, NO, and that connects to one of the signal uh, pins. So we've got two of these push button switches, one for the uh, missile and bomb release switch, um, and then one for the pinky switch. Uh, and uh, this could also be on the thumb button as well if you're making an F4 grip. Uh, in this case today, I'm making kind of a hybrid grip where I've got a five-way navigation switch on the thumb as well. Uh, so that's the Debolistus PCB. That's the orientation. You don't need to worry about this. This is for daisy chaining, uh, so we don't need to worry about that for our purposes today. Um, this is this is the board that you need. Uh, again, everything is clearly laid out here. I'll make this image available uh, on the Thingiverse page and on the Cults page as well, so you can reference this when you're doing your wiring. But otherwise, this is it. Okay, so here we are back at the workbench. And what we're going to do now is we are going to wire up the push buttons. Um, again, uh, the five-way navigation switch, uh, you'll see two of them there, as well as the trigger. Uh, I go over that in the assembly video for the bait grip. I also have the wiring of the trigger uh, in my uh, Wizzo HCU video as well. So if you need to reference the uh, wiring for that as well, that's, uh, that's uh, in those videos. Uh, but here are the push button. We are connecting the ground and the normally open, uh, and then the same for uh, this push button as well. Again, these are for the pinky button and for the uh, bomb release button as well. I'm just wrapping the wire a little bit uh, as these buttons have a very convenient hole, um, so it allows me to uh, uh, insert the wire into that hole and then wrap it around uh, respectively. So that's uh, that's convenient with these push buttons. Um, so those two are the five-way navigation switches. Again, I've got my uh, handy-dandy orientation guide there. Um, okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm connecting the ground wires to the common ground. Uh, so I've uh, just poked them through there, and then I've soldered them on the other side of the board. Uh, everything's very neatly spaced out on this board, so it's very easy to solder to it. Uh, I just uh, ensure that the wires are clamped, and then uh, uh, insert them into that hole. And that way, now I've got uh, all the ground wires connected. Uh, and then from there, what I'm doing is I'm inserting the five-way navigation switch. This is going to be the trim hat. Uh, so I've fed those through, and then I'm going to uh, solder each of these uh, individually here to the uh, signals, um, to the signal pins, and uh, covered that a few moments ago in this video. Um, Okay, so now that is the trigger. Um, so I have trigger one and trigger two. Uh, so I'm uh, soldering those. Um, needed a little bit of magnification as the wires are quite small. All right, and then here we are connecting the other five-way navigation hat. Again, this time around, I put another five-way on the thumb, uh, kind of like the F5, uh, except with two extra inputs. Um, technically speaking, you could just bind forward, back, and push to a five-way navigation 
hat and uh, have that be your uh, F5 grip. But I like having the two extra inputs. Um, I know it's not quite as uh, historical as the real thing, but uh, close enough for me. Okay, uh, so now we have everything wired up to the Devilestis PCB. Uh, and now comes the assembly portion. Um, so we've got the trigger there, uh, and uh, and this is the hat. So I'm going to feed the trigger and the trim hat through, uh, and the uh, missile or bomb release button as well. Um, the nice thing about this PCB and this grip design is that you can wire everything up without installing it into the grip. Uh, so you can check the electrical connections uh, before fitting everything into the grip. So I had actually uh, opened up the Verpal software and just ensured that everything was uh, lighting up, and we'll cover that in a few moments here as well. Um, so right now I'm just trying to feed that uh, trigger housing through. Um, there we go. Now this is the uh, connector mechanism, um, and uh, we're going to wire, sorry, not wire, but uh, screw the two millimeter or M2 screws uh, into this assembly. And so what this does is it allows us to have a discrete part that connects to the verbal base. So if in the future, for example, um, this 3D printed part wore out, you could always replace it. Um, so I wanted to ensure that this design had something that had some longevity and the ability to repair in the future if necessary. Um, so I try and avoid glue wherever possible so that uh, if something breaks or uh, if it uh, uh, you know requires you to, to update it or something along those lines, if you want to connect an extension piece or something in the future, um, this can be unscrewed and removed and then uh, and then replaced. Um, so I removed the uh, outsized rubber connector on the five pin mini in there. That's not entirely necessary. It just depends how long the screws you're using uh, are, uh, but I cut mine to size there. Um, so fit the trigger in, just ensuring that uh, the uh, base plate there is smooth. So I'm just filing that down as I noticed a little bit of binding. Feed the piece of filament through on both uh, sides here to ensure that the trigger stays in place. Um, that can take a dab of glue, uh, just a little bit, just to pin it in place, or you could use uh, 2.5 mil or 2 mil M2 screws. Um, those are available as well. Um, okay, so now uh, I have uh, connected the uh, five-way navigation switch on the thumb piece there. Uh, again, the way these work is you take a small piece of filament and feed it through the hole once the switch is in. And then as for the caps themselves, those are entirely press fit. Um, you can use some glue, but uh, they, they should fit just right off the printer. You should be able to snap them on to the, uh, to the connector there. Uh, so we uh, insert the nut into the pinky and uh, bomb button as well, and then screw in the switch. Um, here I tried to use one of my newer uh, hat, trim hat, Pieces. Uh, this is uh, similar to the one that you see in the F-15E Strike Eagle Wizzo grip. Um, however, I realized uh, a little late that I've printed it with the wrong orientation, and it's actually uh, upside down. <laughs> um, so uh, I will uh, I will swap that out momentarily here. Uh, but this whole design again is intended to be able to remove the switches and replace them if necessary. Because uh, as you know, sometimes you solder something up at a temperature, it's working, and then it cools down, and all of a sudden it's not working again. So um, it helps to be able to uh, pop these things out and then fix them. Um, and uh, here I've just got a, a few more screws, uh, just uh, putting a dab of glue on the filament, uh, and just a little bit there. Again, the trim hat is press fit, but um, you know to ensure that it stays, uh, sometimes I will uh, put a little bit of glue. Um, these are the uh, hex uh, screws as well. These feed through the base and kind of keep everything locked in tight. And you can fit a, uh, a nut on the uh, receiving side as well to ensure everything stays in place. Um, these two do take a little bit of uh, a little bit of work. Uh, if I had a drill handy at this moment, I probably would have used that. 
Um, and there you have it. So that's the B8 grip. And on the left here, we've got kind of the F4 style. And on the right, we have the one we just made, which is the F5 style uh, with the five-way navigation uh, switch on the left side. And uh, so now we're going to go ahead and plug these into the Verpal base. And I'm just going to pop open the Verpal software and show that all of the uh, connections are in fact valid. And uh, then we're going to bind these to our F5 in DCS. Alrighty, so here we are in the VPC configuration tool and uh, I'm going to pull the trigger. Okay, the pinky and bomb button, perfect. The five-way navigation hat on the trim button and then the five-way navigation hat on the thumb button as well. And we're lighting up and we are good to go and set up the profile. So. Uh, off to the races, let's bind everything up in DCS. So now we are in the DCS controls section. I'm going to select the F5E, which is one of the modules that uses this grip. Okay, and uh, we've got all of these stick inputs here. So I'm going to double click and then click the respective button uh, here in uh, on my stick so that it shows up in DCS. Uh, this is how I set up all my bindings. Uh, so I just go through and then uh, double click and then pull either the trigger or the trim hat or whatever it is relating to the actual input. Uh, and there you have it. So we are we are going through here. Everything's showing up uh, properly in DCS. Again, great thing about this grip, no coding required, right? All we had to do was configure it like we would any other grip, uh, uh, whether it be a Thrustmaster grip or a Verpal grip uh, in the software just to ensure that everything is showing up and we are good to go. There you have it, folks, the completed wiring guide for the B8 Crip. As you can see, it's a straightforward, no-code solution that allows you to interface any custom grip with your Verpal or Thrustmaster base. A huge shout out goes out to Double Estes on the DCS forums for making this possible, for, by releasing their PCB, and also a huge thank you to the subreddit Hotas DIY for nominating my B8 grip for their Hall of Fame. That's awesome. It's greatly appreciated, and it's an awesome community. Thank you again for watching. As always, consider hitting that like button and subscribing as it helps the channel grow, which in turn helps me make more cool stuff for you, the community. All the best, and see you next time.